Okay, back to our infinite sheets of charge here. Since we have a conductor here um, between B and C, a couple things we know. We have the electric field inside there is going to be equal to zero. And then what I like to do is kind of break it up and just think of it as two separate ones at the ends, and I'll call it sigma left and sigma right. And this particular question is asking us to find the surface charge density on the right-hand side. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use superposition. We know that for any one of these planes, we know that the electric field is given by sigma over 2 epsilon naught. So all we need to worry about are the signs, which direction they're pointing, and then also, well, actually that's about it. So let's go ahead and do this and use the fact that we know the electric field is zero inside at point A. So the electric field, say at this place right here, the electric field would be equal to, well, from sigma P, the left one, actually from each of these, they would give contributions to the right since we're on the right-hand side of it. And so we get sigma P over 2 epsilon naught for the first one plus sigma p over 2 epsilon naught for the second one. Then we also have sigma left here, and again, we're just assuming these are all positive. We'll put in minus signs later if we need to. Sigma left on the right-hand side of it would contribute to a field to the right, so that's going to be positive. Sigma left over 2 epsilon naught. And then sigma right, again, assuming it's positive, it would create an electric field to the left on the left side of it. So we get minus sigma r over 2 epsilon naught. Now remember this has got to be equal to 0 because we're inside the conductor here. And so we can write that sigma, well let's just say this, let's say that 0 is equal to sigma 2 sigma p plus sigma l minus sigma r. Okay, so we know what sigma p is problem is we have two unknowns here. We don't know sigma L, we don't know sigma R. But we do know sigma S. So we can write down that sigma S is just going to be equal to sigma L plus sigma R. So if we put that down here, sigma S is equal to sigma L plus sigma R. And then if we just subtract these two equations, so I'm going to put a minus sign, minus sign, and a minus sign here, we get minus sigma s is equal to 2 sigma p minus 2 sigma r. I can solve this and I get that sigma r is going to be equal to sigma p, and let's get my sign right, plus sigma s over 2. That is exactly the correct answer.